Hey guys, it's a friction here, or Tiger Tank 1 2, however you call me. I don't really care. Welcome back to World of Tanks, where we are today reviewing the Amex M449. And I'm a little bit uh, caught a cold again. <laughs> I'm not very smart, um, but I did um, punch up the thermostat now because it's it's getting cold here in Switzerland. And yeah, winter has uh, surely arrived. So we are today reviewing the Amex M449. This is a French tier 8 premium heavy tank with. Um, quite superb armor and it's available for 8,000 bonds in the bond store but it's not this variant it's the exact same tank but with a different style you get like the tricolor the french um, national flag on top of it it looks quite nice and uh, sadly it means you cannot switch the styles because it's a unique vehicle so yeah this review is going to be a bit different because we are going to uh, abstain from reading like the stats at first we're just immediately going to jump into the gameplay so that you guys have a much better understanding what this tank actually has to offer so why is this tank well so well liked or why was it use why use why was it used to be so liked well, um, I'm not entirely sure if that made any sense but this tank is probably one of the original heavy tanks, uh, one of the original premium tanks in 2015-16 that was uh, considered to be really powerful and maybe a bit overpowered because it has some really good armor. But before we go to the armor, let's start with the gun. You get a 100mm gun that uh, you know if you have played any of the other French tanks, the AMX 50, 5100, uh, the Somua, the Lorraine 40T, it's basically the same gun. 100mm gun with uh, AP, APCR and high explosive shells. And the very first thing that you'll like immediately if you are free to play a player or a player who is very conscious of uh, the amount of credits is spending, then um, you'll notice that the AP shells have really good penetration. The AP shells have 233, uh, 32 millimeters of penetration, which is the norm for the 100 millimeter gun on the French vehicles. It's a really, really nice amount of penetration, and that will allow you to really deal a lot of damage. That also means that you rarely have to switch over to the APCR shells, the premium APCR shells, which do come in uh, with 263 millimeters of penetration, so an increase by about 30 millimeters. But yeah, they're not that much better, but still nice to have them because I was able to knock out the defender with the lower plate shot right there. The gun overall, penetration is great, shell velocity is decent. Um, one major downside to the gun though is lack of alpha damage. You usually only have 300 alpha damage, that's the norm on this gun and in the year 2022, where 100 millimeter guns, usually 105 millimeter guns, have 360 alpha damage, it's a bit of a letdown. But it's an old premium tank, but it still does kick very well. The rate of fire is okay. You have 5.8 rounds per minute, which you can work with, and is in the end about 1,007, 800 DPM. So the main goal should be with the equipment that you can mount on this vehicle to increase the DPM. Because the armor is great, but it doesn't help you if you are unable to shoot fast enough. So you want to imp improve the DPM and you also want to de um, improve the, the dispersion values. Because sadly this tank is quite horrendous when turning the turret or the vehicle. The dispersion values are not that great. Uh, dispersion values at 100 meters is like, it's very inaccurate for a French tank. 0 0.36 the, um, accuracy 100, at 100 meters and the aim time is at 2.9 seconds for a fully aimed in reticle. So in the end, you're going to have a vehicle that really does not aim in fast enough and that's why you have to um, use some different equipment, use some of the field modifications to improve upon that because sadly it's just not good enough um, in my opinion. It's an old premium tank, that's how they used to balance these premium tanks back then. So moving on to mobility, this tank has a thousand horsepower engine and it has top speeds of 40 kph so it's able to actually go anywhere on the ma uh, on the map it does weigh 75 tons fully loaded out so it is quite heavy and the horsepower per ton ratio could be better it's at 14.29 horsepower per ton but i think the vehicle is still mobile enough to get you from point a to b and look at this beautiful armor we just bounced 2400 damage worth uh, or hp worth of damage on these tanks and we're just bouncing more because the armor is really really good 
The vehicle doesn't have the best turn rate, that's what we kind of expect of a heavy tank with such, you know, large armor and such a weight. Only 25 degrees per second, so you want to improve that in the field modifications definitely as well. The turret turns 28 degrees per second, which is fine, but it's not that great either. And you can see that the armor really works well if you have the target in front of you. But as soon as you have several targets that are shooting you from different angles, well, things do get a bit messy. So that's why it's important. Keep the front towards the enemy. Don't angle too much because you have like these side skirts right here, which are kind of weak spots if people are able to shoot them. And the side armor is actually really thin. That brings me to the armor layout of the vehicle. It has 1,500 hit points, which is about the norm for a tier 8 heavy tank. The IS-3 also has 1,500. Now, I am use, using improved hardening, which does give me 200 HP more. I think it's a good lineup. I think with improved hardening, vertical stabilizer, and with gun rammer, because of the um, firepower slot, this tank really has a lot of, going, a lot of things going for it. And I've, I really enjoy this setup. You could obviously go for mobility with the turbo and take out the gun rammer, but me personally, I like to have more DPM because 40 kph is good enough and to get like 16 horsepower per ton instead of 14, well, doesn't really matter too much to me. So yeah, I think we're going to jump into the other game where we can really talk about the armor and I can show you guys what the vehicle is capable of doing against or what it's capable of doing against tier 9 opponents. So let's jump over there, then we're going to have a final verdict, and I'm going to tell you guys if the vehicle is worth it or not. Okay, so you can actually see my loadout right here. This is the loadout I run, and this is the loadout I would recommend for most of the city maps. On larger maps, well, you can think about changing it up, but since I'm really cheap, and I don't have enough credits to run two setups on all of the vehicles, this is my main setup, and I think it's quite good for basically any scenario. So you can see we're tier 9 matchup, uh, we're playing on Paris, a very nice map. <laughs> also we're in a French tank, so that fits as well. And the tank, well, it has a whopping 190mm of armor at the front. That's really nice. The lower plate is angled nicely and it does bounce quite a few shots, because look at the angling right there. But the side is only 55mm thick and 40 at the rear, so... Yeah, I've been high explosive pen from the side and the back, especially since the new Chinese tanks, the BZ-176 is now in the game, it's going to probably be a lot worse. Now, if you're facing someone in front of you, keep your front like this, do not angle too much. I'm going to show you guys what happens when you angle too much. And um, yeah, the turret armor is also quite thick, 250 millimeters at the front. Um, you do have a very large cupola on top, which is a weak spot and which will be penetrated. Uh, I will show it in the gameplay as well. And you have 120 on the side, so it's not too bad, but usually things will go right through. So somebody did hit us. It was the SU-130PM, and I'm not entirely sure where the round went in, because there is no real penetration mark. But he must have penned me somewhere. It's really weird. Shot just got absorbed, I got the damage, and uh, we lost, well, we lost quite a, a big portion of our health, 500 HP. But yeah, the gun itself, even though it's not the most accurate one, even though it doesn't have the best aim time, doesn't have the best uh, DPM as well, I think it's still pretty reliable, most of the time, if you, fully, if you are fully aimed in. This gun is a gun that I've been using for several years now on like all kinds of French tanks and I just think it's well it's uh, it's pretty well made and uh, I think it's flexible enough you just have to be a bit more cautious with aiming and um, it will help if you have a um, if you can get the dispersion values down so let's see right here okay we get hit by the BZ 176 but it doesn't do any damage we get hit by the Iron Army with a high explosive anti-tank round and it goes right through the side here because we allow him a little bit of an angle now that wouldn't have happened if I was just looking at him from straight from the front but yeah sadly it has happened and uh, well you just have to know where to angle and when not to angle what about the view range? The tank has 370 meters base view range, so it's pretty blind. It's blind as a, uh, as a bat, pretty much. Um, 
yeah, you want to have a crew, you want to have maybe premium consumables as well to get that to at least 400, 410 meters because, because it's quite important to always be able to at least see a bit forward, uh, at least 400 meters. I think that's, that's probably what you should be having. Other than that, I think the vehicle itself is a pretty interesting, cool platform, especially if you've played the French auto-loading heavy tanks prior. I think it's a, a very cool kind of change to have a French heavy tank with armor, even though it's like more like a standard heavy tank, because it has armor, it has a decent gun, you know, it has some drawbacks on the gun. But generally speaking, I still think it's, it's pretty cool to have French tanks that have some armor, because I've played a lot of French tanks without armor over the years, and it's always a refreshing start to be in a French tank that has armor, to be able to fight in like close quarter combat, and I really like the M4 line. The M4 line is really great, especially the tier 9, the tier 10 now, they are both really really nice, um, and the tier 9 was always a highlight, and I think this premium tank kind of encapsulates all of the, the strengths that these tanks have, and uh, makes it into one powerful kind of um, package without being uh, borderline um, overpowered. The penetration is great, but the gun handling is not the best. You do have uh, an okay rate of fire, but it's nothing to write home about. And also you do have some weak spots on the cupola on top of your turret. So in a hold down position, it's not completely invincible, which I really, really like. So yeah, I think it's a well-balanced tank. Back in the days, in 2016, it was probably one of the strongest vehicles, one of the strongest heavy tank contenders in the game because of the armor. And um, I know that the uproar was pretty large when this came out with the Scorpion G and the Defender. And uh, I think it has held itself pretty well. And it's a tank that I, I certainly can recommend. Even nowadays, like six years later, this is still a tank that I still think is great. And if you like the French heavy tanks, the M4, if you have the 49 or if you're currently working towards the uh, M4 heavy tank line, this is probably a vehicle that will help you out a great deal because you can grind your crew, you can grind some credits, it's really reliable, anyone, new players, old players alike, will be able to play this tank and don't have to think too much about it, but it's not entirely like foolproof, you still have to pay attention, you still have to keep your HP in eye, you still have to look at the armor loadout and, you know, uh, or armor in general and where you're supposed to be going, how you're supposed to be hiding your weak spots. And I think, like, if you're an inexperienced player, this tank will feel pretty underwhelming, I think. Um, if you're making, like, a lot of mistakes, if you're putting yourself out in harm's way um, unnecessarily, where you're showing off like your sides when you're like not really aiming in properly and you have the wrong equipment this can be a pretty lackluster tank and you might just be thinking like what is the great what, what is the fuss about this tank because it's just it just feels like a french heavy tank that is like really bad at everything it does but it's actually pretty decent at everything it does it, it's like one of those very well-rounded tanks that with some attention to detail can become a really great tank and that's why I really enjoy the AMX M449. And I think out of 10, it's probably an 8 out of 10 for me. And even today, this vehicle still can do a lot of damage on the battlefield and is still very reliable. So how do I put the rating together? Why would I give this an 8 out of 10? Well, first and foremost, I think the armor is definitely the largest plus on the vehicle. It really has great armor, turret armor and hull armor. It does like survive so many rounds. The gun itself is decent, penetration is great, the rate of fire is okay, but it does have one major downside and that's just that. Unfortunately, the accuracy and the aim time are both subpar and that's where you lose at least one point for me personally. The second issue I have is you barely have any view range, but that's not that important for a heavy tank, especially for a French one. Um, but one thing that really kind of takes it down as well, for me personally, is the fact that... <coughs> oh god, I have to cough, sorry about that. Yeah, another thing that just takes it down a little bit is uh, the, the lackluster horsepower to weight ratio. Um, it is, you know, it can be 
40 kph fast but it rarely reaches those speeds um, because it just cannot accelerate quickly enough but i think it's okay you can work with it i still think it will get you from point a to b faster than other tanks with similar kind of armor layout and what really really is a big plus for this tank is just that it's a really good credit earner it rarely needs to fire premium APCR ammunition, even at higher tiers, because you have 232 millimeters of penetration, you really don't have to spend much credits in keeping this tank running. You don't even need the premium consumables. It just gives you a little bit of an edge. That's why I use it. But the tank itself is still like a really good credit earner. And during this holiday season, it's probably one of the it's gonna earn you a lot of credits and it has a lot of protection so you can make mistakes and i think that's really great so that's why i give it an 8 out of 10. so i hope you guys did enjoy as always comment like and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video until then have a good one